Hi everyone, so I wanted to use today's video to talk about some intimidating books that I have, that I actually own. And I want to start with, well, first of all, of course most of these are really big, um, large, you know, long books. Um, there's one though that's pretty short, I will get to that. Um, <clears throat> secondly, my voice is leaving me, so imagine I do want to upload on, on schedule schedule you know what I mean so I'm gonna do it regardless um the first one not only in a, in a particular order but um, I just wanna talk about first Dr. Chicago by Boris Pasternak so this book was, um, I started reading this, I got maybe um, 50 pages in and I realized that it was very difficult to read. So <clears throat> the thing is that it has ma uh, many different perspectives. There's, um, in e each perspective is, um, well not perspectives, but from what I remember, um, there's a lot of details about each character's life and not a very obvious and immediate connection um, to one story that connects them all. So I found it very difficult to read. Of course, it's nothing bad. I mean, if anything, it probably makes it a better book or a more interesting thing to read. But it also makes it a little bit more difficult. So when I put this down, um, I never picked it up again. And it's been like three years or four, I don't know. Um, so that's kind of disappointing from my part, but in any case, um, I do think I will end up reading this fully. Not sure if it's gonna be this year, but at some point I will, and I, um, I hope I know more, um, or I guess I have more reading practice, so to speak, when I finally get to read this seriously. And the next one. <clears throat> this is honestly almost embarrassing, but in any case, this is the Third Reich by uh, Michael Bully. The thing with this book is that I was going maybe like 11, I was probably 11 or 12, and I was going through this phase where I was interested in World War II and the Nazis and all these kind of things. Um, and, you know, the thing is, is that uh, my parents ended up buying this for me and it was too much for me um, I think I read a little bit of it and I was like, you know what, this is really heavy for me and I just, I don't know, I just, I guess I read some other thing and it's been maybe seven years <clears throat> since then, so imagine, maybe more than seven years um, so yeah Bad decisions there from my part again I guess it's the kind of thing that you can consult really rather than reading it from beginning to end unless you're that kind of person but apparently i'm not so another book um this is actually the the very short one um pedro parma by juan rulfo this book is less than 100 pages and i'm still not able to finish reading this I, i've tried reading this twice and there's always a part in which I and so I start to realize that I don't understand what really is going on, so I stop. And <clears throat> I think the last time I I um read I tried to read this was probably five years ago. So that's really disappointing again. And I really should get to this. Um a lot of people do say that this is pretty difficult to read and that the size is kind of deceiving. And you might read the book without really understanding it and still have the illusion that you understood it. So that's almost scary to think of. But in any case, the next one is House of Leaves by Mark C. Danielewski. I was very interested in this book um, when I knew about it because some people said that it was a very disturbing read. And that um, it was something very experimental and different and so on. And it is definitely different in terms of format um it has these parts in which you know the the writing style changes and there's pictures and so on documents and, and you know sort of thing 
but for in the beginning it's mostly just text and like footnotes that are very long too so it, it's a lot of um anecdotes and kind of details that it's hard to connect into a main story i'm not used to reading stuff like this so three or four years ago when i got this um i was definitely not ready for it and, and i'm not sure if i'm ready for it yet so <clears throat> i guess i'll have to postpone reading this postpone it somewhat because it's kind of scary i mean you know in the disturbing way i mean the things that i got to read weren't really like super eerie or, or creepy they were slightly um i guess real but they were very subtle so i guess i haven't gotten to the good parts and that's only what i guess because um i don't really know what to expect from the actual flesh of it of this book that i haven't gotten to so yeah now another one is um dune by frank herbert this book is not that long it's 500 pages um I've read books about this size before, but um, first of all, this is science fiction, alright? So that's one thing. Because um, it, it seems to be that sort of science fiction in which there's a whole new world from that you have to um, understand from scratch. And I'm not, I don't tend to read that sort of, of, of fiction. Um, I'm really not a fantasy person in general. And in, even science fiction. Um, I tend to read more things that are like slight variations of the world that we know instead of like whole new um, book, um, worlds created by the author and that you have to get into and, and so on and so on. So that's one thing with Dune. And the other one is that I've heard some people say that the issue of gender is not very well handled by the author in this book. Although I have to say, I've also heard the opposite. I've heard some people say that um, this book almost has like somewhat feminist, like, feminist um, messages going on, and you can see sort of, you know, these sort of ideas coming through the text. The thing is that I don't know how to, what to expect from this book, and I was really just exposed to this book, I think, because of um, the Iron Maiden song, to Tame Land. And, you know, I guess I wanted to read it and such. And a lot of people seem to have this book in their, like, books I haven't read that are in my bookshelf, collecting dust and stuff, which is also obviously my case. So I probably should work on that. And th the thing is that um, this book seems to be very politically heavy. Um, and, you know, it's the sort of thing where... If you don't agree with the things that are proposed by the author or that seem to be proposed by the author it's very easy to get uh, to like be biased against it and I think that happens to everyone even if you think you're being objective you will still be um, sometimes people think they're being objectively against something that they obviously have a bias against or something like that Okay, I can barely talk without starting to cough, so I really have to end this video now. And also, dogs are barking. Thanks for that. Also, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and see you in the next one. Bye.